Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Balan and this is Vintage Story. Today I'm going to be showing you all about NPCs, or non-player characters, ruins, the loot you can find, bony soil, and panning. Let's start with NPCs. First, how do you find them? This map here can actually be a little bit of a clue. Sometimes, depending upon the terrain that you're in, you can see them on the map, usually in a wagon that has a striped top on it. Now in this case, there's your uh, kind of image of what you're looking for, and an average one. Now, this doesn't mean that they're all going to be in a wagon like this, sometimes they're in campfires or something like that, but this is the most common one that you'll probably see. This will house a little human by the name of Noah. Now, their names will also vary, and the contents and everything in here are all pretty much protected, so you can't really do much with them, uh, including trying to take their stuff, it just won't work. Now you could try attacking them, but I recommend against it because they've got 25 health, as you can see here on the little tooltip, and they're not afraid to attack back if you hurt them too often. If you right-click on them, you'll get a little uh, like UI that pops up that you can also talk through in here. In this case, I'm just going to ask them how if they have anything to trade. You can go through different uh, speech options. The first time you speak with them, though, you'll have a few more to choose from. But let's go with, do you have anything to trade? This is your main thing with traders, is that you are here to trade. This is the stuff that you can buy. This is the stuff that they will buy from you if you have available. Doesn't mean that you have it. And then once you choose the item, you can select it on here, and then you can offer up what you're putting in here, whether it be any of these items or just some straight up gears, as it says here. Your total cost is gears. Rusty gears specifically, these are what you're looking for. You'll find these throughout the world, whether in caves, mob drops, and all sorts of other areas that you might expe um, expect or maybe even not expect uh, when breaking some different items or finding them in structures. You can get a lot of gears just by selling your goods to different traders. Now this is just a locals, local goods, Noah the clothing merchant. As you notice here, they have a whole bunch of clothes. And then it'll say that delivery of new goods in three days, which means that a whole bunch of their uh, goods are going to rotate to something new. Uh, in this case, they have some Gamboy's leg armor. They might actually have a chest piece or a helmet next time, which could be very useful. Now, like I said, they're not limited to just clothing. There's a lot of different merchants, and specifically you're going to want to look for one of them at some point, and that's going to be a treasure hunter. Treasure hunters offer a little bit something more than the other traders, and you can see that there is perhaps a little something else. Now yes, they'll have different items for trade, whether it be armor or weapons or just different valuables, clothing and stuff, and they'll have different items that you can sell to them, of course. But most importantly, you'll see know of any interesting places around here. And they offer you Bring Me a Tin Bronze Pickaxe. Now this is a big story event. I recommend that if you do see this option, you choose to pursue this much later on. Another thing that traders might offer is a treasure map. This will allow you a brief, I don't know, excursion to try and find this item. By using it, it will place an X on your map, and you might find some something of value or something that isn't that valuable. But it's entirely up to you. It's a treasure map, and it could lead to something really, really good. Now, on top of that, if you're playing multiplayer, you have the option of using these other tabs up here. The Auction House. On the Your Auctions tab, you can sell items. On the Action House, you can purchase items from other users. Now, of course, the uh, trader in this case will take a cut for delivery fees, so keep that in mind. It will get marked up, but it is one way of trading with people across the server that might be thousands and thousands of blocks away. Now, there may be ruins as well, whether they're above ground or below. This is an example of one that's quite large and may house some secrets within. This is an example of a little bit smaller of a ruin, maybe something a little bit more typical. Sometimes they're just a few uh, cobblestone blocks poking up out of the ground or other blocks. Usually, they are of the similar rock type of the biome that you're in. And this one you can see is granite cobblestone. So it's going to kind of blend in when you look on the map. It's very difficult to see. It's just this, there's like a slight shadow in place. So you're not going to find these easily. But there are some other things you can find, sometimes obvious. Other times you'll have to really dig around to find stuff. Now you can use these for building materials, but alternately you can also grab bony soil or some different cracked vessels. Bony soil you're going to want to pick up and keep for later. That's going to be used for panning, which we'll get to at the end of the video. 
but otherwise you're going to also want to grab any kind of vessels that you find. Now it doesn't mean that you're going to be able to pick these up unless of course you're a malefactor, uh, then you have a chance of grabbing one of these things and taking them home, which could save some space in your inventory. But otherwise you're going to want to break these and get some kind of loot that might pop inside. I've got a whole lot of clutter going on in this area here. And what I'm here specifically to show you is going to be these ore vessels. There are a few different types. There's a seed vessel, food vessel, a forage vessel, an ore vessel, tool vessel, and farming vessel. Each one pretty much drops similar items to what they state on the outside. So if you find one that you might be interested in that you're definitely looking for, some of these will have some rare items in them. Otherwise, they'll probably have some relatively common stuff. Uh, but you are guaranteed to find something useful at some point, especially uh, if it's early on and you're doing a little bit of uh, exploring, trying to find some early resources. Now there's also a possibility you could find a storage vessel. These are more likely going to be found underground rather than above ground, but these are actually vessels that you can store things in. Uh, I mean, you can you, you put food in here and it has a, a good possibility of being able to preserve it a bit better, as you notice above. It currently says stored food perish speed is reduced, so it will actually make things last a little bit longer in most cases. But this is also biome dependent. If you have a very hot climate, this actually might not work very well, and you're probably going to want to use something called a larder, which is keeping these things underground. But that's for a future video. Either way, they're very useful things to find and bring home. You just break this, and you'll actually be able to keep a storage vessel, as opposed to the cracked ones, which are very fragile and just fall apart upon trying to open. As you're exploring, you may find something relatively interesting. Oh look, there's a cave down here and oh, rusty gears. If you break one of these, you can get some of this money basically that's just sitting around on the ground. Now it may have had a practical use in ages in the past, but now it is currently your currency. So you're going to want to keep that in mind. And if you find something like that, especially outside of cave entrances, you're probably going to find more interesting things down below, though you are also going to find a lot of dangers. So be very aware that it is dangerous underground, even more so than above. But you may find different ores in the walls. But if you delve a little too deep, sometimes you can find things that you wouldn't expect. But they can also have potential rewards hidden on their persons or just nearby. Now, exploring even further, you might find some underground ruins. These can vary in a lot of different ways, some of which will have collapsed chests or different things that might also yield some different rewards, sometimes just something basic, sometimes a little something more useful. But don't be afraid to dig through. Sometimes you've got multiple floors. In this case, there is a downstairs below this one. But that's not all you can find in underground areas. You can also find secrets that you can use to travel long distances. This is a translocator. This, once repaired, can teleport you randomly to another translocator in the world. It will send you thousands of blocks away and can be a really quick means for getting to other areas. But you do have to repair it. And I'm not covering that today. That's for you to figure out, though I think the tooltip pretty much gives you the idea. Now, as you may come across drifters, these strange mobs of varying types, sizes, and abilities can reward you with different drops. In this case, I got really, really lucky with some great drops. This is one of the extremely rare types, a double-headed drifter. It gave me temporal gears, rusty gears, and some plax fibers. Now these temporal gears, let alone being able to use one to set your spawn point so that if you die, you can then respawn in that location, can also be used as a light source in very poor lighting conditions. And if held in the offhand and using a knife, you can then use it, inserting this gear to yourself and merging with it, restoring your temporal stability a huge chunk so if you're really low and hurting because you've been underground too long or in the storms, you can always use one of those in a pinch to try and repair your temporal stability. Now with all those mountains of loot and ruins and dangers, what's a safer way of getting some loot? That is going to be 
panning. A pan is simply made by taking any of your wooden log types, combining it with a knife, and you can get yourself a wooden pan. It has infinite uses. You just need to stand in a little bit of water. One block deep is fine, though if you stand in more than that, you're probably going to start drowning, so I don't recommend it. Then you'll want to have some kind of soft block nearby. In this case, we've got sand, we've got gravel, and we've got the rare and yet super lucrative bony soil. All you do is just right click on one of these and your character will start panning for goodies. And then you just need to click again on the next block and grab some more stuff. And you can see in this case I got a piece of flint, I got a granite stone. These aren't really going to be the best drops from each of these, whether it be sand or gravel. You just need to be standing in water when doing it. If you try and do this on land, you can pick up the item, but you're not going to be able to pan it because you need the water to be able to actually start searching for the items. So you're going to want to have a bit of space in your inventory. This is an excellent way of getting early game copper nuggets. If you don't have enough to start with your first mining tools or anything like that, then this is going to be the way that you can do it, especially if you're trapped in your base because you're being uh, attacked by a lot of drifters at nighttime or something like that. It's a really good way of doing it if you do have access to water and some soft materials like gravel or sand. Now on top of that, you've got your bony soil, which can be used for the same things, but you're going to start getting a little bit nicer of rewards. Some of them are going to be much more varied than what you would get before. You probably won't get the exact same things, but you do get things like black fibers. You might get some of those gears we discussed earlier, as well as some early game copper tool heads that you might be able to use to make some copper tools. Oh, but there we go. I just got a nugget of gold and these will run out over time. You get several uses out of one block, so don't think that just one block is going to be one panning. But you can see just by clicking a few times on these three blocks, I was able to get several resources just by standing here and doing a right click. And there you have it, NPCs, ruins, loot, bony soil, and panning. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, come visit us on Twitch. And we'll see you guys next time.